Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a review on the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. This is in the shade number 13. I do just want to point out, yes, I normally do this part of the review in studio lighting, um, but I was looking at my schedule of videos that I have to film tomorrow, because it's currently Saturday. Normally I do all my filming on Sunday. And I have so many different kinds of like makeup application videos that I have to do that this product wouldn't fit into. Apologies if you do prefer to see some of it in studio and then some of it in natural, um, but today we're just going all natural. So I purchased this completely on a whim. It wasn't even really on my wish list or anything, but Jessica from Jam Beauty 89 totally convinced me to buy this. She was raving about it in a product video, um, and I had heard that the Misha BB creams are pretty good for fair skin, so I ran online and tried to find it and bought it. I got it for $19 Australian from iHerb, and I think iHerb does ship internationally. Um, it definitely ships to Australia, obviously. Now with this product you do get 50 mils and as you can see it's in a squeezy tube but it has a pump so it's really nice and easy to use. My cap is starting to get a bit of product in it so it's not like completely clean like it's obviously leaking a little bit but not in a bad way I'd still travel happily with this and this does have SPF 42 so it's quite a high SPF and it's zinc based which means it's a physical screen which I much prefer to chemical screens so that's a big plus for me however a big downside for me is that this does have perfume in it it's got fragrance and it does smell kind of yeah, perfumey, florally kind of, but not that strong. It's just that it's there. And I really wish that skincare products and makeup products didn't have fragrance in them at all. I think it's completely unnecessary. I can totally cope with just a kind of bizarre smelling chemical scent that's just the fragrance of whatever the ingredients are. I don't need synthetic fragrance added to cover up any of that. Also, I looked at the ingredients on this one. It does have a few questionable ingredients in it that I thought I would point out as well. It's got a lot of silicons in it, so that might be something that you're like not a big fan of. Um, it does have mineral mineral oil and also has talc and it's got a lot of sort of quite heavy oils and waxes in it um, which means that for me it's not something that I feel like I can wear every day because I feel like my pores get blocked by some of those ingredients. The texture on this one is like a creamy sort of gel texture. It's definitely like when you squirt it out it doesn't have a lot of drip or run to it so it's not liquidy um, and I think that's because it's got quite a high silicon content. I think some people overestimate the coverage that this can give. For me, one pump will definitely give you a shed of light finish. I have tried two pumps like to really build up the coverage, especially with like a brush, um, and I find that it just looks a little bit heavy on the skin. So I wouldn't recommend this for building, basically, and I think you should just use a single pump and enjoy the kind of sheer to light finish that it gives. I find it definitely gives more coverage than the Balm Balm Shelter Tinted Moisturizer, which is definitely just a sheer coverage, but it doesn't give quite as much coverage as like a lightweight foundation for example something like the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude. The finish on this one is beautiful it's kind of a sort of satiny finish it really mimics skin it's not overly dewy but it definitely isn't matte and so I really love it for that reason. The longevity on it is what I would call just average um, I find it can get through an eight hour day fine I don't think it has particularly great longevity beyond that but it isn't advertised as being a super long wearing product or anything so there's no sort of heavy claims behind it. Then we get to the shades. Ugh. The shades on this one, there's only six shades um, and they only range from light to medium. Now obviously that's not ideal, it's not very inclusive, but we also have to keep in mind that Misha is a Korean brand um, and Korean skin coloring in general is light to medium. The other reason is that it is very sheer, so even though six shades even in the light to medium category doesn't sound like enough, I feel like it would um, be quite wearable for quite a few different skin tones and such in between. The shade 13 is kind of like a neutral cool shade, it's not quite as pink as some other products I've tried, but it's definitely on the cool side of neutral. It comes out looking kind of a lot more gray than when it's actually blended out onto the skin but as you can see the match is pretty good for me right now uh, it is summer here in Australia I do go a little bit lighter in winter when my skin's not constantly exposed to sun all the time because I do just live in camisoles in the summertime I do wear SPF on my body but I still go up about half shade in summer I do think they have room to expand down to a shade number 11 like the Laneige products go down to 11 and they're just a little bit lighter I can wear my Laneige BB cushion whitening in winter um, easily very easily it's quite fair 
I think they should expand into the deep ranges even if they are a Korean brand because they are sold I think in quite mainstream uh, American stores and such uh, to my knowledge I think they're sold at Target so I feel like if you're going to go into the US market particularly then there needs to be a shade expansion come with that similarly to Laneige who don't really cater for deep skin tones either they can sort of rest on their Korean origins for so much time but after a while I think it's just like you know they really should expand so now I'm going to do a demonstration for you as well as show you some swatches of what the product looks like compared to a few other uh, foundations and BB creams that I have. And I'll also be doing an eight hour wear test for you. So now we've got some swatches. This is the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream in number 13. This is the Laneige BB Cushion Whitening in 11C Cool Porcelain. And this is the Laneige Snow BB Cream in 11. This is the, the Balm Balm Shelter Tinted Moisturizer in Lighter Than Light. And then I've also popped on a couple of foundations. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude in 1N0 Porcelain and the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10. So you can see that the Misha number 13 is a similar depth to the foundations. Um, it's sort of a similar color actually to the Estee Lauder. A little bit more on the pink side perhaps, just a touch. Um, but it's not quite as fair as the Laneige BB creams. My favorite shade out of the my favorite shade out of the BB creams is probably the Laneige 11C, the BB cushion whitening. I really like how this one looks on my skin. Um, I can wear the shade in winter as well. I think the mesh is going to be more of just a summer color for me right now. So in terms of application, I tried it with a sponge, I tried it with a brush, and I also tried it with my hands. And as I expected, my hands. I think of the best finish just because it is a little bit more like a moisturizer sort of tinted moisturizer sort of product which I typically like to apply with my hands and um, probably second best would have been a brush and third was my beauty blender I didn't like my beauty blender as much because it did take away a little bit of the coverage um, and I feel like you get a nicer finish even with the hands take about one pump I don't need a primer with this either and I find that it looks best without a primer I did try it with a couple of primers my Too Faced Hangover Primer and my Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. They didn't really help the longevity and I think they kind of made the product look like it sat on top of the skin a little bit more. Because it is a BB cream I feel like you want to really push it into the skin so it doesn't even really look like you're wearing anything at all. So you can see that it's a very light coverage. It pretty much just evens out my skin tone. My breakouts are still very obvious. But more than anything it just kind of helps my skin to look a little bit more even. So this is what it looks like with the rest of my makeup on. I've just done a really lightweight sort of everyday makeup look today because that's kind of how I use this product. Now unfortunately guys it is quarter to two in the afternoon. I have had a bit of a mirror of a day and wasn't able to get onto this until this time. So unfortunately I'm only going to be able to do an eight hour wear test. However this is not designed to be a long wearing product. Um, it's not advertised as such so I kind of felt like that was okay because it's just like an eight hour work day sort of amount. Um, so I will check in with you guys in like four hours time and then at another four hours. Okay, I'm so out of breath. I just had to walk up the stairs because the lift in our building is broken. So it's 20 to 6 now, so it's been nearly 4 hours. And this is what the makeup is looking like. It still looks actually really good. Considering it's 34 degrees here in Melbourne today, it's looking pretty good. I did do some practice, um, and of course it came off on the chin rest as I expected. But like my blush and that is still there. Still looking pretty good. I was wearing my glasses, so I do have a little bit of rub off there as well. But it doesn't seem to be like breaking down anywhere funky. So I will go about my evening. I'm going to go off to a friend's to have dinner and play some board games. And then I'll check in with you guys when I get home. Okay, so <laughs> we stayed at our friend's house for much longer than anticipated. And it's currently nearly one o'clock in the morning, which is crazy crazy late for me because I normally am in bed by like 10 30 11 at the latest on a Saturday night but anyway so this makeup has been on for actually about 11 hours now so it's actually turned into a much better wear test than I anticipated obviously some of my concealers come off as well around my breakouts but it's worn off a lot around like my nose 
um, and particularly around my hairline but it was so hot on the tram getting to our friend's place that we I was like literally beads of sweat on my head so I'm not surprised that it hasn't held up that well because it's not that super long wearing or waterproof or anything but it's wear isn't that noticeable because it is quite a sheer product so in that regard I don't really mind that it isn't like super long wearing or anything it certainly looks a lot better than if a full coverage foundation wears off kind of patchy so who would I recommend this product for if you have a dry to normal skin type, I'd really highly recommend it too. I know that Jessica has a dry, a dry skin type and she loves it because it makes her skin look amazing, like in texture. For me, I have a normal skin type. At times it can even lean a bit combo-y, a bit oily, but at the moment it's feeling pretty normal and it seems to work really well. I do find that if my oils do break through, it can break it down a little bit faster throughout the day. The longevity isn't quite there. So that's for that reason, I probably would maybe not recommend this for very oily skin. Um, however, do your research, try and find a vlogger that has done a review on this with really, really oily skin before you dismiss it because I'm just making an assumption based on my experience of the product. I think if you are also about my skin tone, maybe even a little bit deeper, maybe one shade lighter, you could wear it. But I think if you're sort of more like an NC5 to zero or below, like if you're like ultra, ultra fair, then I don't think it's gonna be quite light enough for you. But because it is a very sheer formula, it's gonna be quite adaptable for a few different shades. You can really blend it in and blend it down the neck and etc. and it will work for a lot of different skin tones around my sort of general depth of skin <laughs> so that's everything i have to say on this product today i hope you enjoyed this review don't forget to give it a big thumbs up for me if you did if i did leave something out please leave a comment below and i will answer your question for you if you did miss my estee lauder review you can pop up there and watch it now and you can subscribe by clicking on my face down here and until next time thank you so much for watching guys and i'll see you in my next video bye